Hi, um, it's Mohamed Soliman. I'm here to present finger input, uh, capturing expressive single hand thumb to finger micro gestures. Um, this work uh, was uh, co authored uh, by Francesca Muller, Lena Hegeman, and Juan Solru, Christian Theobald, and Jorgen Steimler. Uh, it was done in Zarland University uh, in uh, collaboration with Max Planck Institute for Informatics in Saarbrücken. And we are the best paper. Thank you. Um, so we start off, we, we have all used mid-air gestures uh, somehow. We know Minority Report. I'm not going to ask, raise your hand if you saw it, because probably you all saw it, hopefully. And um, some control of drones using mid-air gestures. Um, specifically, we, uh, we have all seen um, thumb-to-finger gestures or micro-gestures that uh, usually use um, subtle and um, subtle interactions that conserve the privacy of the interaction for people as well as uh, it's a fast interaction. You can just um, swipe on your fingers uh, to do uh, an action. Also, it provides tactile feedback when you can actually trace your uh, fingers. So a lot of work has been done in this area, um, but uh, it has not been formally uh, presented the design space for this kind of gestures. So what we propose in finger input actually is a thumb to finger design space uh, which includes uh, multiple dimensions that we're going to go through later, um, as well as we actually provide the system. So we have the full pipeline. We provide a system that can do full hand post tracking and continuous touch detection. And I emphasize on continuous because we keep detecting the touch all through the frames. Um, so we go a little bit through the related work. Um, some work has been introduced conceptually on uh, micro gestures, a lot of work that might seem familiar. Uh, the problem with that work is has limited thumb to finger interactions. So it, it's limited to taps, limited to um, some arbitrary shapes, limited to using other objects. Second uh, type of related work was technical. A lot of great work was done with Microsoft Lab and other labs to uh, actually um, build the hand model, track it. But the problem with those kind of, uh, the, 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 the shortcoming of those kind of work is um, they didn't have continuous and precise touch uh, point estimation. So it really detects the hand model. You can track the hand model all the time, but there is no touch detection. Uh, the third work we are concerned about that actually does touch detection on hand. Multiple work has been done this way, but the problem with that work is um, it's done on flat surfaces. So your, your fingers are not flat usually, uh, I, I guess. Yeah. So. Um, Detecting touch on that is kind of different than touching, uh, detecting touch on a flat surface. So this is where finger input comes. We, um, our, my presentation is going to be divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is the gesture design space. We propose a design space for, the, uh, for micro gestures, thumb to finger micro gestures. And then we propose or provide a gesture recognition system. So this is the full pipeline. We actually have a design space. We propose some gestures. We propose the gesture uh, recognition system. And then, of course, we do system evaluation. Um, for the first part, is the gesture design space. Um, so we propose four dimensions for the gesture design space. This should be a, a base for future work that actually uses uh, thumb to finger uh, gestures. So um, the first thing is the touch initiator. Which finger initiated the touch? Is it the thumb or is it another finger, as we see in the photo, in the figure? Sorry. And then the touch location. We divide each finger uh, into four round uh, parts and uh, three segments, uh, but the thumb has two segments, two vertical segments. So where did the uh, touch happen? On the finger itself. And then the third part is the gesture action. Uh, so we have four types of actions. Uh, one is the tap, which has been proposed a lot in previous work. Uh, second one is a long finger or vertical slides. Uh, third one is around the finger, which is the, um, um, the horizontal slides. And then uh, arbitrary shapes, which has also been proposed before. Um, the fourth uh, dimension is the finger flexion. Does actually the, the shape of the finger matter or not in this specific gesture? There are some gestures, let's say the tapping, you don't actually need the finger flexion. You're just tapping somewhere. There are some uh, uh, other gestures that you can tap and flap. Uh, for, we we're going to see uh, in the next slide. So out of this design space, we propose a gesture set uh, that kind of tries to cover all the design space. And this is going to be basis for our uh, evaluation later. Uh, I want to highlight some uh, of those uh, gestures. Some of them have been done before. But in, in this uh, specific sliding gesture, we actually uh, propose the gesture uh, that uh, 
when you when you slide on the outer side of the finger is different than when you slide on the uh, inner part of the finger as you see on the slide and also up sliding up or sliding down of course are different and then the second novel gesture is um, sliding right and left or horizontally on the finger landmarks this has been done before but not differentiated along uh, different fingers and then the sliding along the fingernails uh, both directions on different fingernails so this is the gesture set and then from this point, we uh, introduce the gesture recognition system. Uh, we have some gesture, uh, detecting gesture requirements. So we have this gesture set, we have this design space. What, what does a system that detects those gestures need to be able to detect them? So first of all, of course, hand tracking. Uh, the system should be able to do hand and finger segmentation, identifying uh, touching fingers and flexion estimation of fingers. Second is the touch. So touch location, where did it happen? Temporal touch detection, so is it touching now or not? And last thing is real-time performance. Uh, we saw this requirements and then that we derived from the design uh, space, and then we basically did our gesture recognition system. Um, we have four, uh, four steps in our uh, pipeline. The first one is we have the depth image. We use an Intel, uh, Intel RealSense SR300, probably some of you are familiar with, that can be placed on the, uh, on the head for it or on the arm. Um, then we do a uh, per pixel hand part classification. Basically, the, 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 what we need in this step is actually identifying and classifying each of the fingers plus the palm plus the none hand. Uh, we use a full CNN unit architecture. It's a very uh, famous architecture in uh, medical image processing uh, from 2015. And then we do hand pose tracking. So now we, all, we know the fingers. We know which is the palm. We know which is none hand. So we do hand pose tracking using a generative model which uses uh, both kinematic skeleton as you see up there, and also a 3D uh, Gaussian mixture model. And the idea of the energy function is to decrease the disparity between the input and between the model that we have of the hand already. Uh, so now we have the hand post tracking. What's left is the touch detection. This is where we actually uh, contribute a lot in this area. So for the touch recognition, uh, we provide continuous touch recognition by uh, attaching touch proxies to the hand model. So each of the segments are presented by um, a, a, a sphere and also the fingertip. And then at this point, after attaching the touch proxies, it's really easy to detect the touch. It's just the intersection. If an intersection happens between those touch proxies, the cylinders and the spheres, then there is a touch. And we can actually detect which uh, fingers touched. Um, so uh, back to the requirement that we had, we actually provide hand tracking. We provide hand and finger segmentation flexion estimation of fingers, identifying touching fingers. We also detect the touch, the touch location and the temporal touch detection. And the real-time performance we're going to see in the evaluation later. So the requirements that we derive, ironically, uh, we actually uh, fulfill. Um, so the system evaluation, um, so we, we had all those parts together. We derived, a, I guess, a design space. We derived some gesture from the design space. We did a gesture recognition system that follows the requirements of uh, detecting gestures. So system evaluation. Um, for system evaluation, we did two, two uh, types of studies. Pilot studies to actually kind of like unit testing to test each part of the system separately and how they work and how they actually the performance of them. And then an integrated evaluation that tests the whole pipeline of gesture detection. So for the pilot studies, we did three pilot studies. Uh, one is the accuracy finger classification. Uh, remember the first part, we classified the fingers, so how accurate is that? And then a common hand tracker uh, evaluation, which is 3D fingertip localization. So how different is the 3D fingertip location from the actual fingertip location? And then the touch contact. Um, for details, you can um, uh, refer to the paper because of time constraint, but for, um, I want to uh, focus on the, pi the, the third uh, study, which is the touch contact. So. The idea is uh, we want to know if there is a touch or not. Uh, how do we get the, the, the ground truth? That was a problem for us. So there is a way that you actually manually annotate. But if we have uh, 5,100 frames, it's going to be really hard to annotate where the touch happened and when it happened. So what we did is we built a capacitive touch sensor. Uh, it uses conductive fabric on a finger uh, glove, as you see in the photo. And then whenever a touch happens, the resistance change or the capacitance change. And we, then we can actually automatically annotate when there is a touch and when there is no touch. And we have some accuracies. So on frame by frame accuracy, we got 87%. So 
for each frame is there is a touch or not there's 87.5 percent and then we use some time windows so on 500 milliseconds 600 milliseconds 700 milliseconds apparently uh, obviously when you increase the time window the accuracy increase but it's still uh, so 500 is still within interactive uh, area so we have 95 percent this is one part of the as i said so we basically tested each part so next one is the main study which is the gesture detection accuracy um, so with the gesture set we provided, we uh, started doing a study. We, have, we had 10 participants, four of them are females, and we tried to recruit people with different hand widths because uh, from previous studies, it differs actually a lot between different hand sizes. So we had a range of hand lengths, hand widths, and then for each participant, they did four tries for each, for each gesture and uh, 50 gestures each. So you see only eight classes, right? But then each gesture has multiple uh, variations. So for example, the sliding, you have sliding up and down on the outer part and inner part. So in total, we had 50 gestures. Each gesture was performed four times, uh, two standing and two uh, sitting, and then we had 10 participants. So it, overall, we had 2,000 trials of gestures. Um, so this is the, our confusion matrix. Uh, our overall accuracy was 91.06%. Uh, percent. Uh, we noticed that the fist tap and the circle drawing, uh, so uh, last one and the fist tap is the second one, had the highest accuracy of 91.8. And then the linear thumb to finger slides um, had lower accuracy because uh, of the uh, detection of slides on the inner part of the finger. So we're going to go to the limitation, but I mean, occlusion is very obvious in this kind of system. Um, for future work, so after evaluation, uh, we see uh, how we can extend on our work. So in no way our gesture set is exhaustive or representing all the possible combinations of the gesture set. Uh, of the gesture design space that we present. So future work would extend this gesture uh, 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 set to use more uh, variations of the design space. Uh, second part is the mobility. So our system um, uses the sensor that's connected to a, a tower PC because it, uh, apparently it needs a lot of resources. But then we can actually extend on that and use uh, um, a, a, a microcontroller, a microprocessor that actually sends the depth data and then gets back the actual uh, gesture set, gesture detected. Um, so to summarize, uh, our work presented finger input, which is able to, which started with proposing a gesture design space, then deriving a gesture set from this design space, and deriving some technical requirements for the uh, for detecting those gestures, and then we build the gesture recognition systems that actually uh, comply with those requirements, and in the end we uh, we provided a, a, a thorough and technical system evaluation to our. Uh, proposed system. Um, so this has been a finger input capturing expressive single hand thumb to finger micro gestures presented by me and uh, co-author Francisca Moller, Lena Hegeman, uh, Juan Solru, Christian Tiobalt, and Jorgen Steimler. Uh, best paper, thank you. Um, I can take questions. If there's any questions, please uh, state your name and affiliation. Hi, hi, Montag Sud, uh, Interactive Media at Dresden. This is really very good work. Uh, thanks a lot for this great presentation. Um, I was wondering a little bit about the number of gestures. You said you even want to extend uh, the number of gestures, but can you uh, reflect a little bit on the practical usage of these gestures? So what people do you think First of all, what can they distinguish uh, nicely? What would they prefer? Which kind of gestures? I mean, this is a huge design space, obviously, but you can imagine that uh, you should not use every single gesture in this design Right. Space. Um, this is a great question, and we have been wondering about that, actually. Um, so um, what we propose in this system is that we can actually do that. What we're going to do with that is actually a follow-up uh, paper, right? So we're going to have some conceptual studies that how people would use and which uh, gesture they would be able to identify. This is kind of, um, um, uh, we're throwing that in so everyone can use it. Uh, we have this gesture that we can actually detect. How are we going to use that is going to be up to whoever going to use this design space and us when we do other studies. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Oh, there's a question. Hello, uh, thank you for the talk. I was just wondering um, if you had any idea about the feedback you could give to the users based on the gestures they are doing. Because I guess in the experiments, you told them, do this gesture, do this gesture. 
So in a real case scenario, what kind of feedback could you give? And how could they, for example, correct a gesture that they did not do well, or maybe the, the system did not interpret it well? Right. Um, so in the studies, we don't give um, visual feedback of the detected gesture, so just to remove any bias. But in, in a real life scenario, what would happen is, um, Actually, our recognition system was recognizing uh, based on time window or sliding window, so it was correcting itself. So what, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to show which gesture is detected after like 500 milliseconds mm -hmm. or something. Um, also, we noticed that people um, tend to sometimes, um, when they want to do some gesture like tapping, they actually do sliding, uh, horizontal sliding, because there's like a spatial... There's a, uh, uh, like you have to choose between spatial resolution and between actual gestures. If you do a sliding, it's the same as tapping. So in this case, we would, in an interactive system, we would present, we would show what gesture is being done uh, through time uh, and what action would be taken. This is a good point. How, how can we use that in actual uh, interactive systems? Uh, what we also provide uh, is that uh, some uh, suggestions to designers that they should use um, only a subset of the, as the previous question mentioned, only a subset, a subset of these gestures to avoid confusion, then you would have fist tap and like linear slides and then some of them, but you cannot put all of them. So the confusion will not be there. So the user will actually know what he's performing. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I had one last question for you. Uh, you said that occlusion was one of the problems, of course, uh, yeah. which makes sense. Did you detect any other problems that uh, would, would account for the 10% um, detection that failed, or is occlusion pretty much the only problem? No, no occlusion, and as I mentioned now, um, some gestures get confused, as we saw in the confusion matrix, because there's a trade-off between the spatial resolution uh, of the, uh, like the horizontal slides on the finger and between the tap. So usually people tap, and then it moves a little bit, and we can actually, our system is able to detect this small uh, change. And then what happens is the system is uh, classifi classifying it as a horizontal slide instead of a tap. So this is actually the main confusion that happened. Also, occlusion resulted in a confusion in um, the outer side versus the inner side uh, slide. Um, I, I, uh, we also uh, assume that the user holds his hand in front of the camera. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an optical system. So that happens all the time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank